Good morning, third grade. I'm so excited to say that we have reached the end of our last full week of school. This video is covering Beautiful Feet Part 3 for May 8th. At this time, what we're going to do is I want you to either pause the video and reread this entire story so you can see it all together and have a better understanding, or you can go ahead and open up your book to page 361. Get ready for me to share this PowerPoint as I read the story aloud to you. I'm going to get this started here. So we are on page 361 to begin. Beautiful Feet, a true story retold by Ruth Braille, Ruth Braille, illustrated by Gabor Utomo. The aged old custom of binding feet to make them beautiful causes this Chinese lady to appreciate the Bible's description of beautiful feet. Her tale is an adaptation of a true story that has often been told to encourage others in faithful witness. Page 362, The Mission School. Tired from packing, Ming Chu sat down on the porch of the mission school. She smiled at the shouts of the children on the playground, remembering her own first years at the mission school. Her thoughts were interrupted by the sound of running feet. Ming Chu, watch out! Ming Chu looked up as a ball bounced close to her feet. Reaching down, she picked up the ball and tossed it to the bright eyed little girl who came racing after it. Run, Ming Chu called. The little girl called back over her shoulder as she ran back to the game. Come and watch us, Ming Chu. Ming Chu called back over her shoulder as she ran back to the game. Come and watch us, Ming Chu. Ming Chu followed the running child, moving slowly and carefully in her tiny shoes. At the edge of the playground, she stopped to watch the game. Two leaders of the teams urged the children on to victory. One leader was the missionary, head of the mission school, and the other leader was a young Chinese man. Both men were special to Ming Chu. The American missionary had been like a father to her during her years at the mission school, and the young Chinese was the man Ming Chu was to marry. As the game ended, the two men walked toward her, arguing cheerfully. Just wait until tomorrow, said the, Ming, said the missionary as they stopped beside Ming Chu. You hear him, Ming Chu, said the young Chinese. Another day, always another day. Ming Chu smiled. And I will not be here to see either of you win. It is hard to believe it is my last day at the mission school. The missionary took her hand. Now, Ming Chu, this is not a time for sadness. You are returning home to prepare for your wedding. The young man nodded. I too will miss the mission school, but I am looking forward to a new life with you, Ming Chu. The missionary has brought the gospel to us. And now we will give the gospel to others. As Ming Chu smiled up at him, the porters came down the trail, carrying a sedan chair. It is time for me to go, she said. I will return as swiftly as possible with my family. When the porters stopped in front of them, the young man carefully helped Ming Chu into the sedan chair. Then he warned the porters to take special care of her. I want no harm to come to my bride-to-be. Ming Chu laughed. <laughs> we have made the trip often. I will return in one piece. And in time for the wedding, the missionary said as the porters picked up the sedan chair. Yes, in time for the wedding, Ming Chu called back as the caravan began moving up the mountain trail. Days later, the caravan reached Ming Chu's village. Children and neighbors crowded around the sedan chair as it moved slowly through the streets to Ming Chu's house. Ming Chu called greetings to her friends. Then the gates of her house were opened and a servant appeared to take her to her eagerly waiting parents. Early the next morning, Ming Chu's mother sent for the tailor. Soon, material was spread across the room in a silken rainbow of bright colors. The tailor carefully measured Ming Chu for her wedding dress. 
Now the shoes, he said, spreading parchment on the floor. What beautiful feet, he murmured as he traced Ming Chu's feet on the parchment. You must be very proud of such tiny feet. Ming Chu's mother beamed. I bound her feet when she was just a baby. They are the smallest feet in the village, even smaller than my own. Ming Chu thought of the little girl back at the mission school who had run so lightly after the ball. What freedom the children had, whose feet were not bound. Preparations continued for the wedding trip. Soon the caravan was packed and ready to go. As Ming Chu and her family traveled across the mountains, she watched eagerly for the first glimpse of the mission school. Finally, they reached the last mountain pass. There, far below them, lay the mission school. There it is, called Ming Chu to her parents. We are almost there. A special gift. Ming Chu and her family were welcomed, and the wedding festivities began. After a week of joyful celebration, Ming Chu's family returned to their village. Ming Chu and her new husband prepared for their first trip together into the mountains of China. Thank you for everything you have done for us, the two young people told the missionary. We will miss you and will think of you often. May God be with you, said the missionary. Goodbye, called the children as Ming Chu and her husband started down the trail. Ming Chu waved from the, her sedan chair carried by the porters as her husband walked along beside her. That trip was the first of many. From village to village, the young people went, carrying the gospel to the Chinese. In each village, Ming Chu's husband preached and Ming Chu taught the women from the Bible. The women were delighted with Ming Chu's tiny feet and came often to hear her preach, to teach. They began to look forward to the visits of the lady with the beautiful feet, and many of them came to know Christ as their savior. Ming Chu enjoyed the trips over the mountains to the different villages. As her husband walked alongside the sedan chair, Ming Chu would read the Bible aloud. One day, she was reading a passage from Romans. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Ming Chu closed her Bible and looked along the path. I wish I could walk with you she said to her husband. There are pebbles along the path, he answered. What if you slip and fall? I would be careful to lean on you, Ming Chi replied wistfully. Her husband hesitated, then stopped the caravan and let her walk slowly along the path. He held her arm firmly as she walked. I wish my feet had never been bound, Ming Chu said sadly. Then I could walk easily beside you, and we would not have to travel slowly because of my sedan chair. But Ming Chu, replied her husband, you have beautiful feet. No, Ming Chu said, you have beautiful feet. Me? Yes, you, Ming Chu said tenderly. The verse I just read says that the feet of those who carry the gospel to others are beautiful. That makes your feet beautiful, and mine are beautiful only because I help you, not because they're so tiny. I understand, said her husband, but the Lord has used your tiny feet to bring many women to hear you teach. They come to marvel at your feet and stay to hear the gospel. The Lord uses what each of us has to further the gospel. Ming Chu thought for a moment as her husband helped her into the sedan chair. Do you know who else has beautiful feet? Missionary, replied her husband. He brought the gospel to us. Soon we will go back to visit him. I would like that very much, Ming Chu replied. But it was many years before they saw the missionary again. One day they received word that he was returning to the United States. We must go now, said Ming Chu, or we will never see him again. Yes, we will leave tomorrow, said her husband. As Ming Chu packed for the trip, she found her little silk wedding shoes in a tiny box. Husband, she said, 
showing him the shoes. These shoes remind me of the verse in Romans about beautiful feet. I would like to give the shoes to the missionary. Her husband nodded. The little shoes will make a fine gift of remembrance. When Ming Chu and her husband returned to the mission, they were joyfully met by their old friends. When at last they were able to talk with the missionary alone, Ming Chu gave him the little shoes. She explained what beautiful feet now meant to her and asked the missionary, will you find some little girl in America who loves the Lord and give her these shoes? Perhaps my story will encourage her to carry the gospel to others as you have done. When the missionary returned to America, he gave the tiny silk wedding shoes to an eight-year-old girl. She cherished the tiny shoes and never forgot the story of Ming Chu's beautiful feet. The girl grew up to serve the Lord faithfully in many ways. She kept the tiny shoes and often showed them to others. After she told Ming Chu's story, she encouraged her listeners to be faithful in spreading the gospel so that they too might have beautiful feet. Isn't that a wonderful story and a true story? Yes. Go ahead and turn to page 373. I want to give you another challenge. You could pause the video or do this later. Uh, I want you to retell this story to somebody else who's at your house. Or maybe you could call a relative or a friend and just retell them the story about Ming Chu without looking at it, just doing your best to retell that story to somebody. All right, now looking at page 373, uh, you could pause the video and read this silently. All right, so on your work text today, pages 259 to 260, on 259, you have to write a letter to somebody. You could choose somebody, a friend or a family member to write this letter to, and, and when I give it back to you, you could send it, or you could, um, Pretend that you're writing a letter to somebody who has never heard the gospel before, who has never heard the good news of Jesus Christ. Do you remember when we were studying Gladys Elward? We learned and I taught you how to tell the gospel message using a wordless book, which is what many missionaries have done. In fact, there's a lot of missionaries who their focus is on teaching the gospel to uh, military children. And I did that for many years when I lived in North Carolina, and I used the wordless book. It then also helped me to share the gospel to adults without showing them this book, but I have the gospel message memorized. One thing that is really good when I like to share the gospel is I like to remember what we learned about Phyllis Wheatley. Phyllis Wheatley had heard the preacher, George Whitfield, and she loved hearing his preaching, she heard the gospel from him and she believed in Jesus Christ and became a Christian. Well, what made her to start thinking about becoming a Christian was the fact that George Whitfield died. And when he died, and when we hear people in our family who might die or pass away or other strangers, um, it causes people to start thinking about where will I go one day when I die? And so when I talk to adults who don't know Jesus, sometimes that's the first question that I might ask. What do you believe? Or do you know what will happen to you? Or what do you believe about what will happen to you when you leave this earth, when you die one day? And it gets people to start thinking about God and about heaven and hell. So I'm just going to go through the wordless book with you again. Do you still have this at home? The little one that was given to you? If you do, maybe you could grab that. So... <clears throat> This wordless book has the cover. And I would say to somebody, um, the Bible tells us all about God. And the Bible says that in heaven, there are streets of gold. And this is to remind me that God is in heaven. And God is holy, holy, holy. He has done nothing wrong ever. He created the heavens and the earth. And he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Nothing can be in heaven with God unless it is holy like him, pure without having done anything wrong. That makes me think of a big problem because this reminds us of the darkness in this world, the evil 
or what the Bible calls sin, the things that do not please God that we say, do, and think. And you know what the Bible says? We all have sinned. Every single person on, in this world has sinned and fallen short of this glory of God. Hey, that means that we cannot be in heaven with God. And that's right. The Bible says that the punishment for our sin is to be forever separated from God. But God had a perfect plan, a perfect plan. He sent his son, his only begotten son, into the world so that he could one day die on the cross, shedding his blood for us. Jesus died on the cross and took the punishment for us so that we could be saved from our sins. He died on the cross to take the punishment for us, dying for our sins, taking the punishment of being separated from God. But Jesus, God the Son, he never sinned or did anything wrong. So when Jesus died, he was buried, but three days later, he arose from the grave. He was resurrected and he is alive still today. In fact, Jesus was there back in the beginning when God created the earth because he is God. And so the Bible says that those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who believe that they are sinners, deserving of the punishment of being forever separated from God, when we believe that and that Jesus died on the cross and rose again on the third day, God says that we will be saved. He is faithful and just and will cleanse us of our sin. He will make our hearts that are dark with sin be cleansed as white as snow. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. And when we do that, we become Christians. And the Bible says that those who are Christians, who follow after Jesus, that we are to become more and more like him. We are to grow, 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 and become like Christ. And to do that, that's um, for us to pray and read our Bibles every day. And what better way to do that than to go to church every week and to be with other people who believe in Jesus and to help us become more like him. And so I wonder, how will you write the gospel down for somebody to read who might believe in Jesus? One day, on page 373, it explains those colors. Look at those shoes on page 373. Ming Chu's shoes had all those colors that were in the wordless book to help share the gospel message. And once you learn the gospel message, learn how to say it, there are Bible verses that go with it that we learned before. Um, but the message of Jesus is simple for even you as a child to tell another person about the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news that even though the world is full of sin, facing a punishment of living in eternity without God. The good news is that God sent his only begotten son because he loves us and he wants us to turn away from our sin, to confess to him and to ask him to forgive us and tell him that yes, we believe in him. We believe that Jesus died on the cross for us and taken our punishment for sin away from us so that we can be in heaven. In those streets of gold with God forever and ever when we leave this earth. Good job, third grade. Go ahead and complete those two worksheets. You'll read a paragraph on the page 360 and answer those questions. All right, I love you. I hope you have a great weekend, and I am so proud of you.